Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather around the table of the Lord. And we, as we continue to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord, we beg for the grace that, like John, we may truly understand our mission. We may truly understand the meaning of bringing Jesus into the lives of others. And so let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word who chose to became, become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant 
whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Please stand. of all nations and keystone of the church come and save the men whom you formed from the dust The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown, her, had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? 
for surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Whenever a baby is born to a family, we always consider it as a blessing. There is that inexplicable joy when a child is born, especially if it is a firstborn. That is why we extend our congratulations when we know someone who has given birth. And we just don't limit our greetings to the mother, but we greet the father as well. Because every baby is a new chapter for a family, especially for a newly wedded couple, since it will be a mark of a completion of their family. More so, if the, if the couple are first-time parents, there will be a lot of adjustment, adjustments on their part. But that joy is not simply the joy of seeing and playing with their children. It would also consist of the sleepless nights, the changes that they have to undergo in taking care of their babies, the things that they have to give up and the numerous sacrifices that they have to make because they are no longer a simple couple, but they have become a father and a mother as well. In our gospel, we hear the inexplicable joy that Elizabeth and Zechariah felt upon the birth of their son. And even their friends and relatives were there to share the joy. It was not only a joy of having a baby in the family, it was not only a joy of having a complete family, but more so, it was a joy that the curse of childlessness is now gone. But towards the end of the gospel, a question was posed by the relatives and friends of Zechariah and Elizabeth. What then will this child be? Magiging ano ang batang ito? John will not only have an effect in his family, but he will also play a vital role in the coming of the Messiah. He was not only an answer so that the, so that the curse of his parents' childlessness would be lifted out, but he would also prepare the people of Israel for the coming of Jesus. And this was prophesied in our first reading. The coming of the Lord is a joyful occasion, but at the same time, it is also a purification, a time of conversion. And we could pose this question also for ourselves. As we prepare for the coming of the Lord, what kind of children have we become? Have we truly lived our lives as children of God? Can we truly say that Jesus is our brother by the way we have lived. Every child born to a family will always have an impact. A husband and a wife becomes a father and a mother the moment their child is born. The moment their child is born, something is changed. Sacrifices have to be made. Priorities have to be reorganized. Their focus must now be shifted and their responsibilities doubled. But let us not forget that we too were given rebirth through the waters of baptism. The moment we were baptized, we were no longer just children of our parents. We have become children of God. And hopefully, this is one dignity that we will always be reminded of. We are not mere creatures of this world. We are children of God. And as children of God, we are always called to choose God. And the moment we have chosen God, He will be enough in making a difference in our lives. Please stand. Zechariah called his son John 
which means God is gracious. Trusting in God's graciousness and generosity, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church and government leaders may truly show God's graciousness by their loving and persevering service to God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that we may appreciate our Christian name and dignity and live up to our baptismal promises. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that families may renew their love, solidarity, and support for one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that the sick may receive comfort and consolation from the prayers and encouragements of their families and friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that the dead may finally enter the home of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In silence, we lift up to the Lord our personal intentions, remembering all the people are asking for our prayers and for all the people whom we promise to pray for. Lord God, may the life of John the Baptist inspire us to greater holiness. Fill us with the Spirit as we work in the service of your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and answered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those who have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Holy Mother of our Savior, Spirit dwells in you. Oh, how great is your beauty and the grace bestowed on you. Holy Mother of our Savior, 
blessed.